So welcome back to the Bhakti Vaibhava course. Um, today we are going to begin uh, the discussion on the second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, uh, entitled The Lord in the Heart. So in the last session um, we had a discussion about how um, Parikshit Maharaj um, was answered by Shukadeva Goswami. Shukadeva Goswami was inspired by the questions of um, Parishit Maharaj in the 19th chapter of the first canto uh, where he wants to know um, what should a person who is a, a, in the verge of death, what should he do, what is the best thing to remember, uh, what is the best act to perform. So in, in response to that question, Shukadeva Goswami uh, was explaining about the um, meditation of a practitioner. Uh, he was exp- specifically, he, he drew the attention to the worship of Virat Rup in the first chapter, um, being so many other sages who are there in the assembly. So he was trying to address uh, the various other processes that could also gradually lead a person towards devotion. He specifically, at the end of the chapter, he is pointing out that the best process is to worship the, take worship of the personal form of the Lord. Right? And now, in the second chapter, we will see that um, he starts the entire discussion uh, by giving an example of the Virat Rupa which he had explained in the previous chapter and also we can also see uh, the different levels of realizations are also discussed here from, from Brahman to Paramatma and then, and then gradually taking over to the uh, personal uh, worship of the personal form of the Lord which is being stressed by the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third chapter in the change of heart we will see that. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vikasa Swami Nati Namine Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nati Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtati Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we can see the uh, chapter is entitled The Lord in the Heart So Srila Prabhupada coined it from verse 6 of this chapter um, We can see the word that is being used is Bhagavan Ananta The Eternal Unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead So Srila Shukadeva Goswami means without a doubt that Sri Krishna himself is the Lord of the Heart so as Karshneyas, devotees of Krishna, Shukadeva and Parishit know that the Purusha avatars who were maintained, who create, maintain and destroy the material world are Krishna's four-armed swamps of arms. The Lord declares to Arjuna that Ekam Sena Stito Jagat. By a single fragment of myself, I maintain all the material universes. So we will just see a short summary of this chapter, what is being discussed. Srila Shukadeva Goswami now gives a direct example of a person who purified his intelligence through meditation upon the universal form, that of Sri Brahmadev. So there is a link between the first chapter and second chapter. So there is a question could be raised. Oh, is there anyone who did this? Anyone who meditated on this Virat Rupa? Yes, Brahmadev himself did it and he revived back his intelligence. He, forgetful, he was in, the, in forgetfulness. He came back to his consciousness. That we will see in the very first verse. Unfortunately, less intelligent people are bewildered by the Vedic Shabda and thus become enamored by the various temporal features of the universe. So, also Shukadeva Goswami explains that the Vedas, is, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a, compared to a big forest. There are so many, uh, so much of information is there in the Vedas and uh, someone who is not guided properly may get directed, may get lost in that forest thinking the flowery uh, language of the Vedas to be the real goal. So uh, don't get, so he is giving a warning, so don't get carried away by the flowery message of the Vedas, but try to know what is the actual essence that the Vedas are trying to point out. Shukadeva makes clear that the eternal truth of the Lord's form can only be understood from the position of renunciation of such illusory sense objects. So he gives a warning, come on, so life is not for enjoyment, life is not for attaining heavenly planets, but life is meant for you should lead life in a simple way, keeping goal of the Supreme Lord in the mind or keeping goal of taking to unalloyed, unalloyed service to that Supreme Personality. 
So that is what Shukadeva Goswami is driving the um, readers, driving the followers who are sitting in the Naimisharanya. By service and worship, one so fixed in renunciation can realize the form of Bhagavan as the super soul within one within one's heart, uh, one's own heart. So this is the point. So he's gradually suggesting that. So you take to the worship of the super soul who is in the heart. Um, he's further pointing out that there are, in this whole um, second chapter, he is giving directions of two kinds of worship. One is an indirect worship, another is a direct worship. Shukadeva Goswami sets for two different type ways of reaching the spiritual sky and thereby getting emancipation from all material bondage, namely the direct process of reaching the kingdom of God by Bhakti Yoga. So this is one perfect process, which is what the Bhagavatam is clearly pointing out. Then, since there are so many other practitioners sitting in the sitting in Naimisharanya who have all suggested some other ideas to Parikshit, he is saying, well, those processes are also within the Vedic framework, uh, but when you take up to that process also, gradually that will lead you to the process of Bhakti Yoga. One has to enter, to the, take up to the process of Bhakti Yoga. The gradual process of ascending via mystic yoga, the other higher planets of the universe, until the spiritual sky is achieved. Srila Shukadeva presents these two paths uh, exactly according to the version of the Vedas. The chapter ends with Shukadeva Goswami's personal recommendation of the bhakti process, particularly the hearing, chanting and remembrance of the glories of the Lord. Shrotavya kirtitavyascha smartavyo bhagavan nanam So, what a horrible life is this. So, don't live and don't die also because after death, oh, he's going to be in so much hellish condition. Nobody can prescribe. So, both life, living condition and death, after death, his condition is very horrible. So, the point is that if you don't take up spiritual life properly, if you do not know what is your goal of life, what you have to do, then your life is going to be miserable. So, better you watch out what you need to do, how you have to how you can make progress. So this is a gist of this chapter. Now we will get into the actual verses. So are you able to follow? Because if you have read the entire chapter, you should be able to follow what's being given here. It's clear, right? So this is what at the end he is pointing out. This, it's, it's all devotional service. Okay. So did someone achieve perfection by such a meditation? The question is being raised. So here, Shukadeva Goswami is responding. Sri Shukavacha. Evam pura dharana yatma yonir nashtam smriting pratya bharudya tushtat tata sasar jedam amo ghadrishtir yata pyayat prag vyavasaya buddhihi. So he is explaining. Uh, Evam pura dharana yatma yonir dharanaya. Uh, dharanaya. Dharana was on, on what? Uh, it was. Uh, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos. Evam pura. Nashtam smriti pratya varudhya tushta. Nashtam smriti. The memory, memory was lost. I forgot. Uh, 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 who, is, who am I? What is my constitutional position? Everything I forgot. Pratya, uh, pratya varudhya tushta. You know? So, he regained the consciousness. By what? By because of dharana yatma. By, because by the meditation. I, I, I got back my memory. Tata saserjadam. Amoga drishtir. Hmm? So, uh, yeah, so and also regain my consciousness and I knew what I am supposed to do because of uh, the meditation that I performed. And I was able to rebuild the creation having got this knowledge from the Lord. So, here he is making another point. Tata, tata pyayat prag vevasaya buddhihi. Uh, that intelligence was kindled, rekindled. So, Prabhupada translates it like this. Formerly, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, by meditating on the Virat Rupa, regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus, he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. So now, uh, Prabhupada is pointing out that what is the what is the solution for the forgetfulness of the Lord? Huh? What is the root cause of our forgetfulness? That's also Prabhupada is discussing in the purport. So here he is pointing out the beginning of the purpose that even Brahma, who is such a great personality, even he is put into forgetfulness. He forgets. This forgetfulness of the living being, winning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant, is a tendency which can be counteracted by meditation on the Virat Rupa of the Lord. So in the human form of life, we have the opportunity to meditate on the Lord. We, we, have, we have an opportunity to, to um, revive our actual constitutional position. 
or realize our original consciousness. And as soon as the, this forgetfulness is removed, the Vavasaya Buddhi, as mentioned here and in the Bhagavad Gita, follows at once. No? It's the same thing Arjuna says, no, after he was being in illusion, after hearing the entire Bhagavad Gita from Krishna, Arjuna came to senses. Nashto moho smritir labdva tat prasadat maya chuta. So he says that nashto moho, my illusion is gone. Uh, uh, how my illusion is gone? By, by, the, by your mercy. Uh, smritir labdva, I got, I, I, I got back my memory. My memory is regained. So similarly, when we start to engage in the service of the Lord, we will um, be fixed in our constitutional position. This ascertained knowledge of the living being leads to loving service to the Lord, which is the which which the living being requires. This is what uh, what is our actual requirement. What does the soul actually need? The soul needs Krishna. We need Krishna. We want Krishna. We have to serve the Lord. That will give satisfaction to the jiva. So this is the point. The conditioned soul, even in the position of a Brahma, forgets this by the influence of the illusory material energy generated out of false egoism. One can contract such false egoism by invoking God consciousness. So the perfect um, perfect therapy, perfect um, uh, process to counteract the uh, evil effect of the false egoism is to submit ourselves to the Lord. Liberation means getting out of the slumber of forgetfulness and becoming situated in the real loving service of the Lord. See the nice definition of, by Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Prabhupada very beautifully defines liberation generally means we think that we have to, we have to get out of the suffering, birth, death, old age, disease. That's also there. But Moksham Vishnuangri Labam. This is the definition of a Vaishnava. This is how a Vaishnavas understand definitely. Whenever we say liberation, this is the only understanding of Vaishnavas have got. Um, liberation means nothing independent of Krishna. Uh, uh, always in line with Krishna's thoughts. Always this is the Ekatvam the devotee has. This is the understanding. So Prabhupada also completes this purpose with saying, liberation is never in action, but service without human mistakes. That's a nice definition of huh? service without human mistakes. So in our conditioned state, we are committing so many mistakes. But when we have really awakened our senses, there is no more mistakes. We are completely focused in trying to please the Lord. Okay, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Tagur also gives a brief summary of in the very first verse. He says, in the second chapter, the spiritual body of the Lord, practice of dharana by the perfected yogi, the two paths for merging into the Lord for those who desire to give up their bodies, dharana on visible material objects which infer the presence of the Lord, and dharana on Bhagavan are described. What is that dharana on visible material objects? What is that? Yes. The intermediate results of yoga are here described. Gaining Pratyavruddhya is lost memory by satisfying the Supreme Lord, Tushtat. Brahma again created the universe as it was before the destruction. Apyaya. We saw in this, in this verse all these things nicely explained. He had fixed intelligence, Vavasaya. I will create it by the inspiration of the Lord. Right? So we can also learn that. So when our consciousness is revived, then we know exactly what we, should, we are supposed to do, what is the purpose for which we exist. In what way we have to please Krishna, everything will be in perfect cognition with the Lord's intention. So that will that is what is for us to that is what we need to understand. Okay, now uh, we will see the divisions of this chapter. We'll just begin with um, Shukadeva Goswami explaining um, the uh, path that is given in the Vedas. That there are in Vedas there are so many different informations are there, and since there are ideas of elevating ourselves to heavenly planets, that idea, uh, Shukadeva Goswami rejects it. He says not to be carried away by that idea. So, some of the verses are dealing with that. Elevation to heavenly planets rejected and the path of simple life to come out of the conditioning glorified. Mm. Okay. So, message is do not try to elevate yourself to the heavenly planets. Okay. Text 2, translation, the way of presentation of the Vedic sounds is so bewildering that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places. Hmm? So this is the, um, we get this clear understanding from Bhagavad Gita. Huh? So um, a Brahmana or any yogi may try to practice. Huh? And then by, by, by sincerely practicing the portions of the Karmakandya sections of the Vedas, he will try to elevate himself and then he will go up. Hmm? 
Shine Punya, Martya Lokam Vishanti. Whatever Punya he has, for that Punya he will enjoy in the heavenly planets. And after the Punya is finished, he just comes back to the material world. And then what he does? Again he engages in Karma Kandya. Again he goes up. Again he comes down. Again he goes up. Again he comes down. And this is how the life goes on for him. So it is a, such a futile attempt. Okay. Um, So Prabhupada makes the point. The conditioned soul is always engaged in laying out plans for happiness within the material world, even up to the end of the universal limit. He is not even satisfied with available amenities on this planet Earth, where he has exploited the resources of nature to the best of his ability. So, yeah, to get that happiness or satisfaction, he is exploiting the resources of the material nature also. But still he is not fully satisfied. Senses are not completely satisfied. Senses, the, everything, the, whatever pleasure actually we get here are illusory pleasure. The pleasure doesn't last. Flickering. Huh? Uh, Govinda Das very nicely puts it in his song. Huh? Tamala, Kamala Dala Jala Jeevana, thal, Jeevana Talamala. So it's like, uh, like the water drop on the lotus. Huh? Anytime it will fall down. So that's how the pleasure in this material world also for us. So we are very foolishly, we are trying to enjoy this material world. Conditioned souls are strictly under the laws of fruitive activities and as such they sometimes go up to Brahma Loka and again come down to Pathala Loka as if they were unintelligent children on a merry-go-round. Merry-go-round, hmm? <laughs> yeah, this is beautifully. You know, see this merry-go-round, you know, as you know, he said, hey, at some point if you say, hey, you know, I'm a top, hey, he shows hand, waves hands like this and within a few seconds he's down and another person is up. That's how the material world is. Hmm? So there is happiness, distress. There are two sides of the coins and then you know when you just toss it over, sometimes you see happiness, head. And again, you toss it over again, sometimes you see, <laughs> you see uh, suffering, tail, you know. So these, these both sides are there, you can't avoid. So but you want the real happiness, that is there in the kingdom of God. That is there in the thought proper points of that. The real happiness is in the kingdom of God where no one has to undergo the pangs of material existence. Therefore, the Vedic ways of fruitive activities for the living entities are misleading. One thinks of a superior way of life in this country or that, in this country or that, or in this planet or another. Why you are trying to enjoy this material world? Because it's a temporary happiness. Do something higher. There is higher, higher life. There is higher destination where there is eternal happiness. Huh? The, the Lord's abode is full of knowledge, eternity. Uh, and bliss. The Lord is also of that characteristic and His abode is also of that characteristic. So, better go for that. So, now the Shukadeva Goswami is directing in that, in, 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 in that line. Atakavir namasu yavadartha syada pramatto vyavasaya buddhi siddhye natarte nayate tatatra parishramam tatra samikshamanaha for this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fixed and never endeavor for unwanted things, being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely, merely hard labor for nothing. So, in a very short essence, you can see why Shukadeva Goswami is giving this suggestion. Why you don't endeavor for other things, just keep your life simple. That's the message of this verse. Why he is saying like that? It's a very simple answer. Why Sukadeva Goswami is giving this suggestion? Of keep your life simple. Why are you saying that? Then you can advance in Krishna consciousness. Don't waste your time. Already he has introduced this concept in the previous chapter. Don't waste your time on unnecessary petty things. You know, whatever that you are endeavoring, whatever that you are doing, everything is just for this body. Everything is temporary. It's a huge endeavor. Wasting time on unnecessary things. No need. So he is giving a very profound um, ideas, thoughts, how the nature itself is providing so many things. And uh, why are you just unnecessarily trying to, uh, trying to keep this material world into a, you are trying to change this material world into a, into, into a heavenly planet or you are trying to adjust the situations in this material world so that you can find permanent happiness. Because since you are in ignorance, you do not know that this material world is designed in such a way uh, to suffer in this material world. Material world is a place of suffering. 
Dukkale Masashvatam. This is the definition Krishna has given. And you want to go against the definition of the Lord's plan. Which is foolishness. So he's saying, keep up this foolish idea. Keep your life simple. And how do you keep your life simple? He gives inspiration. Mm. Okay, there is one thing interesting in this. Purport. Prabhupada is pointing out that. Uh, the whole material creation is a jugglery of names only. In fact, it is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter like earth, water and fire. The buildings, furniture, cars, bungalows, mills, factories, industries, peace, war or even the highest perfection of material science namely atomic energy and electronics are all simply the bewildering names of material elements with their concomitant, with their concomitant reactions of the three modes. So, do you, did you understand why Prabhupada is saying like this jugglery of names? In the, in the verse itself, you see this point being uh, made. Atakavir uh, namasu yavadartha. In names only. So, uh, what does it mean? Because, see, there are so many things, you know, you, there are so many big personalities, there are so many new inventions, there are so many gadgets, there are so many things, you know, you they keep... Invite, uh, inventing so many different things, everything comes and then goes, everything is for a short time, everything just uh, it, come, it comes with some sudden attraction and after that everything goes away. So that's the nature of this material world, that's how the material world, everything is in names only, all those names are finished, so Prabhupada points out that. See, exactly you see Prabhupada says here, the great kings, leaders and soldiers fight with one another in order to perpetuate their names in history. They are forgotten in due course of time and they make a place for another era. In history, but the devotee realizes how much history and historical persons are useless products of flickering time. This is the point. Brilliant point Prabhupada is making. And that's what you know, you see, so many people they just blindly do what their forefathers did or what their ancestors did, or they are very much worried about their status, what the people will think in this community, how they will uh, whether they will respect us, they will not respect us, or we have to show our family dynasty. But nothing, no endeavor for uh, gaining spiritual perfection. Are you getting the point? What we are discussing here. So everything for name, you know, just name. Oh, what they will think, what he will think, what they will think. But what Bhagavan thinks? Who thinks about that? Um, that's the real thinking. That should be the um, goal of, a, of of any human being. But that nobody thinks because we are completely in, we are immersed in the syrup of ignorance. Huh? You can see sometimes the gulab jamun, you know, it's completely immersed. You know, just full of syrup. So like that we are immersed in tamas. You know, always just trying to, you know, like like any animal, trying to look for sense gratification. That's what we are interested in. We are doing, having all, making all kinds of plans just for that. What is the use of that? So Shukadeva goes, I'm saying, come on, enough of it. Keep your life simple. Now you endeavor for perfection in your life. And how you can keep it, keep it simple? Just look at the nature, he says. Just look at the nature. Everything nature is providing you. Um, yeah, it's a little high takeoff, but... We can get the essence. What is the point being said? Now we will see how the upcoming verses. How nicely he puts it. We will discuss in the last class also. Even if you spend millions of gold, you can't get even one second which is lost. So the transcendentalist should be very much uh, fixed up to use all his time and energy to know the absolute truth and engage in his service. That's the point of this whole verse. Uh, okay, Prabhupada points out in the purport. Srimad Bhagavatam instructs us solely on this subject. From the very beginning to the end, human life is simply meant for self-realization. The civilization which aims at this utmost perfection never indulges in creating unwanted things. And such a perfect civilization prepares men only to accept the bare necessities of life or to follow the principle of the best use of a bad bargain. So there was one, one of my friends some 10 years back. He came to our temple we were in Salem. We are not, you know, we have the ashram is, um, we don't have electricity. And uh, so he came for one day and then the night he wanted to um, shift to the hotel. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said, oh my God, no current. Huh. How you people are living? He said, well, we are all living. What's the big thing? You know, that's how we were all living. You ask your grandfather how he was living. There was no uh, electricity before. They used to use these chimney lamps, they used to have candles and all simple and people were, oh, they were okay, they were fine, they were, they were able to lead the life. Now, we, some of the people cannot even sleep without this, isn't it? Without fan, they cannot sleep, they should hear some sound. <laughs> you know, one of, in, in one software company, many of the managers and staffs were taken to a resort, in some hilly place, okay, it's a quite, um, 
quite a serene place you know no pollution very somewhere near bangalore um it was there was no sound of vehicles so that day they went to that resort they were staying there and uh, one fellow um one officer he he was he couldn't he was just trying to sleep he was not able to sleep for half an hour one hour no sleep he is just walking up and down and then what he did because it was so silent place was completely silent so he could not sleep at all so what he did then he turned on his mp3 player you know put some some jazzy sound heavy sound because his mind is so much absorbed in this pollution in the sound noise pollution it is like that and then after he put some the music and this and that he started to sleep so you see how we have complicated our life you see in the modern world so much complication has happened that simple life uh, is uh, is considered to be utopia it's it's a, it's a dream dream life because so much we have complicated and made the life complex but actually if you really try to uh, keep your life simple and you will see the kind of happiness you can get from it of course simple life or simply living is no use you know, simple living and uh, simply living for krishna that's what we are promoting you know? otherwise what is simple living you simply live keep living here in this material world peacefully you engage in sense gratification what's the point that's not the point the point is keep your life simple uh, you can be peaceful so that you all your time energy your consciousness will be your full consciousness could be engaged in krishna consciousness that's the idea you are creating a favorable atmosphere to practice krishna consciousness so that's the whole point okay um prabhupada says the civilizations are demons for transcendental for a transcendentalist it is a suicidal policy to be intimately in touch with the sense gratifiers of the world because such a policy will frustrate the ultimate gain of life yeah in one yatra uh, one devotee uh, had a plan to um, yeah he, he he was planning to marry one yeah one 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 girl um so but somehow that girl was not so much inclined to um krishna consciousness but he thought okay he will cultivate he will make he will um, gradually bring her to krishna consciousness so anyway that was going on so one time they had invited so many devotees for a house program so many devotees had come for a house program and you know he cooked a he cooked a big feast for the for the pleasure of the devotees and uh, so that was the that was the time uh, when she had also come for the program and then you know she couldn't tolerate she was so frustrated seeing devotees and big feast serving and then that was a real test actually to to find we can test how much a person is very pious very much inclined take up spiritual life when somebody spends lot of time in in krishna service and trying to please the devotees uh, in glorifying the krishna consciousness movement uh, you you can also know who are your real neighbors who are your real friends who are your real beloved so that was the testing point for his program so he has so much inclination that particular devotee had so much inclination devotees krishna consciousness process and all those things at the same time he wanted to be a family man but then that was a test and you know um she got so irritated with this whole program of serving devotees with prasadam and all the facilities so you know she said that she just left him and then you know after the program so devotees were devotees were he was little upset oh this something like this happened and devotees actually um encouraged him saying that okay you see it's krishna's arrangement and if you if you had gone ahead with this marriage see what would have happened to you it would have been a terrible mess so krishna has helped you so anyway you you focus on krishna consciousness and the point is that see it's a test at one point of time you will get a test whether that person is interested in krishna consciousness or not interested in krishna consciousness or interested to serve the lord or not to serve the lord and that's what it is that we see here transcendentalist that's why proper points out here for transcendentalist it is a suicidal policy to be intimately in touch with the sense gratifiers of the world because such a policy will frustrate the ultimate gain of life so that is why so much of instruction is given in the shastras even if you take the uh, instruction of the um, angas of sharanagati what is the first two angas of sharanagati anukulya sankalpa huh? anukulya sankalpa pratikulya varjanam whatever that is favorable to take if you are practicing spiritual life or to surrender to the lord take it up whatever that is unfavorable give it up so what is the most important instruction that is given to sri chaitanya mahaprabhu 
with respect to the practice of spiritual life. Uh, so devotee associates. One, one side he says associate with devotees. On the other hand he says uh, that he also gives the uh, first instruction gives to the Raghunadas Goswami. You know, Gramya Katha Na Shunibe. Right? No, he says that. You know, don't hear this Gramya Katha. He says. Okay, another point that I was trying to say is that um, what's the famous verse? Um, Asadu. What's that? No. Asat Sangat Tyagat E Vaishnava Achar. That's the point. You just give up the Asat Sangha. If you don't give up the Asat Sangha, you cannot make progress. So that's the whole point. Okay. One might note that Shukadeva Goswami never met Maharaj Parikshit while he was ruling as a great king. <laughs> this is very interesting. Prabhupada has made a note of it. Okay. Okay, now let's proceed. Text 4. Satyam Shitau Kim Kashipo Prayasair Bahau Swasidhe Yaupabar Hanai Kim Satyanjalau Kim Purudhan Patria Patria Digval Kadhadau Satikim Dukulaihi When there are ample earthly flats to lie on, what is the necessity of cots and beds? When one has his own arms, what is the necessity of a pillow? When one can use the palms of his hands, what is the necessity of varieties of utensils? When there is ample covering or the skins of the trees, what is the necessity of clothing? So if you're going to if you're going to invite people and tell this, they will all run away. <laughs> anyway, so the point is that actually, if you analyze the modern days, uh, even you can see there are, you know, brahmachari life, the training is like this. We sleep on the floor, I mean, we use a simple mat. Huh? Um, this training is there, it's very good in the beginning days that we try to more and more depend on the, uh, we, we get the feeling that, you know, Krishna, keep our life simple, use all our energy in Krishna's service, uh, don't look for big opulence, um, and that's good. So, you can remain as a sadhu. And, uh, but all these things for what? To keep our life focused in trying to please Krishna, that's the whole idea. Otherwise, you know, you don't think that if you think that I'm a, I'm a great austere person, I have, I'm performing such an austerity, that pride that you're getting from the austerity will kill you. That is not going to take you near the Lord at all. Hmm? That point we need to understand. In Chaitanya Leela, we can see how this, uh, this yogi uh, who wanted to uh, be part of the nocturnal um, kirtan that they used to have in Sriva Sangha. So one time Sriva Stakur he allowed this yogi, because yogi was pleading, please, I also want to take this. And he said, no, you cannot, you know, he's not, Srivast uh, Thakur was not ready to allow him. But since he pleaded him, he said, okay, you please, you please, you don't come in front of anyone, you hide somewhere in the corner of the house. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in ecstatic kirtan with all the devotees. So that particular night, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was complaining that <clears throat> there's something wrong going on here. What's happening is I'm not getting that ecstasy. So like the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was complaining and then, she was, he was asking Sri Vastakur, anything, anybody is here, any, any, any new entrant? Then Sri Vastakur was honest enough to tell him that, yeah, there was one yogi. He's a great austere person. He drinks only milk, doesn't drink anything. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he calls him and then chastises him. He says that, you know, it's not that you get love of God just by performing austerities. If just by drinking only milk, and if you, if you think, only, I, I drink only milk, and you are proud of your austerity also. And uh, just by that, that pride will kill you. You will not, never be able to go closer to Krishna. So, the real mood in, in trying to serve the Lord is to be selfless, uh, without any pride, keeping your, oneself humble, always trying to um, remain as a very insignificant servant in the Lord's service. In that way, you can attract the Lord and His devotees. So, He chastised this yogi like this. And then, this yogi, uh, he left after hearing chastisement from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But when he was going... He was just walking. After that, you know, he was walking a little bit. Within his heart, he felt, whatever it is, I am so fortunate enough. Yeah, this is a good instruction. I am very fortunate enough. I got a glimpse of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's darshan. And he, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chastising only, he got the mercy. You know, he got the mercy means he was, he was purified. So when he revealed that from his heart, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Supreme Lord himself, he is Krishna himself, he knows what is going on in everyone's heart. So immediately he sent devotees to call him back. So he was called back and then he got entry again into the nocturnal kirtan. So why, what was the condition? He gave up the pride. He wanted to be part of the association of, he wanted to be part of the great 
sangha that he got from the association of all the great devotees so that's the key point here so these austerities are very favorable but if you think that these by this austerity i will show how great i am you lost the purpose right okay okay here prabhu is pointing out uh, about the simple life he is giving example of great personalities like shri rupa goswami and shri sanatana goswami were high ranking ministers of state but they were able to leave behind leave behind them immense writings on transcendental literature while living under a succession of trees residing for one day one night underneath each one night underneath each tree they did not live even two nights under the same tree and what to speak of living in a well furnished rooms with modern amenities it is so uh, funny funny you know to hear sometimes specifically those who have pra- who, are, who have joined the ashram as brahmacharis they complain oh in your temple do you have facilities of air conditioning <laughs> what a craziness actually when you read the descriptions of how our acharyas have led their life uh, if we get this this kind of ideas that means there is seriously some problem with us okay the so called comforts of life are not actually helpful for progressive civilization rather they are detrimental to such progressive life so prabhupada says if one is not accustomed to abiding by the life of renunciation and self abnegation from the beginning one should try to get into the habit at a later stage of life later stage of life as recommended by shri sukadeva goswami and that will help one to achieve the desired success so this is required so if at from the beginning if you have not practiced it but whenever you get an opportunity try to simplify your life don't complicate with with your life with so many uh, modern um, gadgets and being dependent on many modern things you know this also prabhupad is again and again in the purports to the bhagavatam is repeating it if you remember in the to the purport of prayan alpai to sabya kalavasmi nigejana uh, in the very first canto uh, this was right in the second third chapter yeah so prabhupada is there also is pointing out that you know uh, over dependence right over dependence on other thing other person is 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 very unfavorable will it will it'll make us too much dependent on others and will not make us progress so others can also mean so many other gadgets so many other facilities so that becomes a stumbling block for our progress so that's the point okay we we'll proceed chirani king pati चीरानि किं पतिन सन्ति दिशन्ति भिक्षां नैवां कृपा परभृत सरितोप्यशुष्यन् रुद्धा गुहा किमजितो वतिनोपसन्नान् कस्माद् भजन्ति कवयो धनधुर्मदान्दान् एज देयर आर नो टॉन क्लॉथ्स लाइंग ऑन द कॉमन रोड डू द ट्रीज व्हिच एग्जिस्ट फॉर मेंटेनिंग अदर्स नो लोंगर गिव आर्म्स इन चैरिटी to the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty or the case of the mountains now closed or above all does the almighty lord not protect the fully surrendered souls why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth here again is giving a um giving again an advice yeah maybe in in the modern days sometimes it may it may we may be wondering how it is possible nowadays there are many rivers are uh, dry <laughs> isn't it and uh, there are many trees also doesn't give fruit also because of all the pollution and all the complication that has happened in this kaliyuga in the modern days um, well what is the main point we need to derive from this that's the whole yes if we can depend try to be more and more uh, to try to lead our life in a more much simple way that's very good so that's the essence of it keep it simple and focus on spiritual life that's a key theme that is being spoken here by shukadeva goswami so that is the essence of it that we need to understand here prabhupada is uh, giving a warning for the mendicants for the renunciants and uh, he is pointing out that don't be remain a parasite lot of warning is given here so here is a good advice he says a parasite is a sycophant who lives at the cost of society without making any contribution to that society so he is one actually um proper is pointing about pointing about the sycophant he is the one who actually he tries to do some favor some service and everything actually he has hidden agenda he wants to exploit you that's the whole thing but it will appear like he he will try to please you his idea of pleasing you is for for his inner motive 
So why a renounced a person who is in the renounced order should never be like this. The renounced order is meant for contributing something substantial to society and not depending on the earnings of the householders. Huh? Why do you want to join the ashram? I get you know two times prasadam, nice place to stay, and also uh, yearly once they'll take me uh, to some yatra, and also ISKCON is international in 165 countries. Huh? We have the branches. One one person wanted to join our temple like this. He, he asked, uh, "Do I do? Uh, how often we will go for? Uh, we will go for international trips. Uh, that's the uh, he, that's his motive. You know, he couldn't achieve it in the corporate world. So he thought that his is international. So maybe we may have some idea. Well, such kind of people cannot last. Also, he said that you know, I want to join, and he came and joined. Uh, you know, he was with just one devotee, want to encourage him. Okay, let's see what he's going to do. So come, come, join. You know." So he was there for uh, two, three hours and then he got a phone call from his mother and then he said, I'll just come back soon. Then he went and so far he never came back. <laughs> that was his last uh, attempt to join the ashram. Anyway, so it's, it's a, as we discussed, this practice of spiritual life is not something, uh, it's a, what do you call, it's a recreation. Okay, It's a serious commitment uh, uh, and an endeavor to... Um, Serve and please the Lord. So that understand. So Sambandha Jnana is required. So that will help one to make steady progress. Okay. So here Prabhupada is giving warning to the renunciants. So Prabhupada says the pseudo mendicants therefore should not take advantage of the charitable disposition of their faithful householders. We can many times see yeah, people uh, they, when they they take up saffron they think they are really great. You know the idea of saffron means saffron represents the color represents. Uh, this yellow color or this orange color represents like the fire. Fire burns all the material desires. So one should have that understanding. So one should not take up this idea of uh, renounced order of life just to enjoy the facilities. The idea is to be. Uh, the idea is to serve the serve the Lord. And how do you serve the Lord by trying to help people to, uh, to dedicate their life, dedicate their life in the service of the Lord, helping people. To come close to Krishna. That's why that is the prime duty of the sadhu. Prabhupada says that. First duty of a person in the renounced order of life is to contribute some literary work for the benefit of the human being in order to give him realized direction towards self realization. So we can see all our acharyas have contributed uh, in terms of literature, so many books. And in parampara, we can see uh, our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada, has written so many books. And uh, in fact, the instruction he got from his spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sasavi Thakur. Is that if you ever get money, print books. So Prabhupada was, he took, took that as his uh, mission and he was very seriously engaged. Not only he, he produced so many books, he also inspired his disciples to write many books and produce more books. So that is the parampara system. That is where the, the book production will always be expanding. So Prabhupada again he gives another warning. He says, those who cannot give any contribution should not go to the householders for food. For such mendicants asking bread from the householders are an insult to the highest order. <laughs> so Prabhupada says, don't, don't demand that, you know, I want this, I want that. It's very, it's a shame. And uh, here, okay, in this purport, Prabhupada, apart from giving warnings of what the sadhu should not do, is also showing what are the, what are the real characteristics of a mendicant. So what, of the, all the characteristics, we can, the real characteristics that we can see is, when a man becomes a mendicant willfully or by circumstances, he must be of firm faith and conviction that the Supreme Lord is the maintainer of all living beings everywhere in the universe. Why then would he neglect the maintenance of a surrendered soul who is sent person engaged in the service of the Lord? So Prabhupada is pointing out that your the devotee should have faith. If the Lord is saving all the souls, what, why not he save the person who is giving his life to in his, in his service? So that's the point. So here he gives an amazing example of uh, Haridas Thakur, how uh, he was uh, leading a, such a simple life, always chanting the holy names of the Lord, and he was um, he was never disturbed in his mind. He was always uh, because of his full faith in the Lord and his protection. He was not even afraid when one time when he was chanting Japa in the in the, in the cave, the, there was a snake, and the snake knowing. The heart of Haridas Thakur, it left, it left the cave. So Prabhupada is pointing out. By the dictation of the Lord, who lived also within the heart of the snake, the snake gave preference to Haridas and desired to leave the place and not disturb him. 
So this is a tangible example of how the Lord gives protection to a bona fide devotee like Thakur Haridas. So and also, you know, so many people were trying to visit Haridas Thakur, so it was a disturbance. So the, the snake had understood and he left. So these were the points that was explained. And uh, so that's the main theme here. The main theme is that um, we have to lead a very honest life, keeping our goal to please the Supreme Lord and uh, endeavor ourselves to absorb ourselves in the scriptures, in serving the Lord and his devotees. And um, yeah, this is a very characteristic of a, of, a, of a devotee, Saralata, isn't it? Being very simple. It's a characteristic of a Vaishnava. Okay. So now, having given this instruction, um, um, Shukadeva Goswami is now, pre he prepared the uh, person, he is preparing Parishad Maharaj that this is how you should be. So don't think of any sense enjoyment or keeping and giving, having an opulent life. Now you are all set to uh, think of the Lord in the heart. Evam svachitte svata eva siddha atma priya atma priyorta bhagavan anantaha tang nirvrito nityatarto bhajeta samsara hetu paramashta yatra. Thus being fixed, one must render service under the super soul situated in one's own heart by his omnipotency because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited. He is the ultimate goal of life and by worshipping him, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. Here he nicely gives a reason why you should worship the Lord in the heart, huh? why you should render service to him. So Prabhupada says that if a person is intelligent, he should understand that there is no happiness in his material world. The real happiness is there with the Lord and his abode. So one should come to that realization. He is an intelligent person, he says that. So he gives an example, he is comparing that it appears like there is water in the desert. So that is actually mirage. So but when you, when you go near and then you see there is no actual, there is no real water. Real water is in the ocean. Huh? Similarly, so using the intelligence, a person has to understand that the real search, by this, by his search, he should come to understand that the real happiness is with the Lord. So, and how to get in, get in touch with that Supreme Lord, um, that Srila Prabhupada points out, that we can come in touch with him by um, calling out him. So, so Prabhupada gives an example. He gives a point that the Lord actually cares for us, the Lord actually gives, uh, he is really is he is uh, thinking about the welfare of the jivas. The baby in the lap of his mother is naturally attached to the mother and the mother is attached to the child. But when the child grows up and becomes overwhelmed by circumstances, he gradually becomes detached from the mother. Although the mother always expects some sort of service from the grown-up child and is equally affectionate toward her child, even though the child is forgetful. Similarly, because we are all part and parcel of the Lord, the Lord is always affectionate to us and He always tries to get us back home, back to Godhead. But we, the conditioned souls, do not care for Him and run instead after the illusory bodily connections. We must therefore extricate ourselves from all illusory connections of the world and seek reunion with the Lord, trying to render service unto Him because He is the ultimate truth. So this is the point. Why we need to seek the Lord? Why we need to uh, render service to Him? What's the point? What is the point? So far, our entire uh, thread, what Prabhupada is trying to convey? Yes. What should the Prabhupada is trying to say? Extricate ourselves from illusion. Yes, we have to extricate ourselves from illusion. Reunion with the... Why, why reunion with the Lord? That's, the, my, that's my question. Why we have to get the reunion with the Lord? So that we can render service. Okay. Why I have to render service? What is it that I am getting by rendering service to the Lord? Then you can get... The part and parcel of the Lord is... Ah, yeah. This is the point. This is what Prabhupada is pointing out. You see, Prabhupada at the beginning he said, you can get real happiness when you engage in this service of the Lord. And he says that you are looking for that happiness elsewhere. So he gives an example of this desert and the ocean. So you look for happiness in so many places, but you cannot get that happiness. So that happiness with the Lord in his service. So that's what point. And now he's saying, so that and it becomes even more easy how to serve the Lord. So now he brings, he gives, he gives such a, he, so far he, Prabhupada gave all those background, he has given all the explanation just to make the point that that Lord is not far away. He is there right in, in your heart. You see, this is the link Prabhupada is bringing. So he is there right in your heart 
and you can just meditate on it. And Prabhupada also he points out that that same Lord, being very merciful, uh, is there in the temple as the Archa Vigraha. So that's what he said. Lord is in the heart. Do we need, now he is raising a point? Do we need to visit temples? So that's why today we are singing that song. Uh, um, yeah, we are singing the song that you know what is, we are, uh, we are. Do we need to go to different uh, Tirtha stalas, holy places? Yes, it is very purifying. It's very enlivening. But even if we go there, we have to serve the Lord um, by remembering Him, by engaging in this, uh, by, uh, by associating with the devotees. Um, that's the key point. Otherwise, what's the point of going to the abode of the Lord? Uh, about uh, going to all this Tirtha Yatra. Many, many times people want to want to go. They want to go because they want to have sightseeing. <laughs> that's why you see, whenever we arrange a Yatra program, so many people are so much, so much enthusiastic. But when you call them for some service, they are not so much inspired. But anyway, still, going to those holy places, there will be Tremendous purification. How? How this tremendous purification happens? The dham in itself is, will purify you. And apart from that, hearing from the devotee who is there in the dham, that will bring you closer to Krishna. So that's the whole point. Okay, now let's see what Prabhupada is focusing here. Interesting point here from the um, Prema Bhakti Chandrika. It is said that traveling to the holy place is a waste of energy and born from illusion. Uh, for the lotus feet of Sri Govinda are the perfection of one's life. Therefore, one should give up pride and envy with firm determination in the heart. One should always worship the Lord without deviation. So, this is the point. Sometimes people ask the question, the Lord is omnipresent. Uh, do we need to go to the temple? So, Prabhupada uses the same logic and saying, He is omnipresent. So, when He is present everywhere, why, why not He is present in the temple? Isn't it? Simple question Prabhupada asks. So, here is the conclusion he is giving. Real solution is to follow a person like Shukadeva Goswami. So this is the whole point. The foolish leaders of a godless civilization try to devise various plans to bring about peace and prosperity in the godless world under a patent trademark of materialism. And because such attempts are illusory only, the people elect incompetent, blind leaders, one after another, who are incapable of offering solutions. If we want at all to end this anomaly of a godless civilization, we must follow the principles of revealed scriptures like the Srimad Bhagavatam and follow the instruction of a person like Sri Shukadeva Goswami who has no attraction for material gain. So, um, so Prabhupada is saying here that, okay, follow Shukadeva Goswami and follow the instructions that is given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So now in this particular verse, uh, Sri Dara Swami in his commentary, he uh, points out that for, he has... In the previous two verses, we got the instruction that keep your life simple. The nature is providing you everything. Don't endeavor for uh, higher things. Higher things means don't endeavor for comforts, physical comforts, material uh, growth, uh, economic development. Don't bother about all those things. Whatever the Lord has given you, keep it simple and endeavor for spiritual pursuits. This message is right there from the first canto uh, of the Bhagavatam uh, that our goal of life should be to for spiritual endeavor. This is given. Now, Sridhar Swami, Swami is pointing out, as Sridhar Prabhupada also at the beginning of the purport, he has taken that same message. He says, then what then should be done? What we should do? So, he said, then, tam bhajeta, you know, you serve the Lord. Hmm? You engage in the Lord's service. So, how do we serve? Uh, why do we, why I have to serve the Lord? So, you can see in the shloka itself, there are nice reasons given. So, we have to serve the Lord because um, he is situated in, in, in our heart by his omnipotency. Swachitte Swataeva Siddhaha. The Lord is situated in the heart as the Paramatma. He is a super soul, Atma. He is very dear, Priyaha. The Lord is actually looking for the conditioned souls, you know. When they will turn their face towards him, the Lord is waiting. Devotional service to him, the dear one is full of happiness. It's a Susukam Kartam Abhyam. It's a happy process. Kevala Ananda Kande. He is the ultimate reality. Huh? So we are looking for uh, Arthaha. What, what is the meaning? You know, what is reality? Nowadays people are speaking about what is there? Is there anything real? Yes, the reality is, is there. That the reality is the Supreme Lord. Sachidananda Vigraha. He is the ultimate reality. That's what Bhagavatam is pointing out. So many philosophers, they what they in their nonsense uh, mental speculation. They, uh, they, they make everything as imaginary or they, they, they say that there nothing has sense like this. There's all these new Mayavadis and so many people. That's how they say, now, now God cannot be ex expressed with words. The words have no meaning. 
the words actually are imagined. They have all these kinds of funny concepts, but Bhagavatam clearly explains that the absolute truth is reality. He is a person. Um, and he has likes and dislikes, and he has his abode. He has his he has his um, set of devotees with him. So all great explanation is given in the Bhagavatam uh, regarding the absolute truth, right? So all this. So that's why here it is mentioned that uh, he, the Lord Bhagavan, uh, he is the ultimate reality. He is not false, while that which is absent of Atma is unreal. He is the Lord whose transcendental qualities are worshipable, Bhagavan. And he is eternal. So he is not for some time, 45 days and then he, he disappears. No, he is there eternally. He is in, he, eternally he is residing in his abode and eternally he is giving his mercy and eternally he is, he is um, experiencing bliss in engagement, in, in trying to have loving exchanges with his devotees. Nityartha means the ultimate goal of life because by seeing him one becomes full of bliss. He is called Nirvrataha, bliss. As a result of performing devotional service, his blissful form is revealed. Furthermore, when there is devotional service, then the ignorance that is the cause of the conditioned state of existence, samsara heto is destroyed, uparamaha. So, this is the message of this particular verse. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Text 7. Who else but the gross materialist will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only, seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering, as the consequence of accruing the result of their own work. So he says it's such a great opportunity and beauty is there in engaging in the Lord's service. So only if only fools will neglect it, only fools will reject it. Hmm? Are you able to follow? Yes. So Prabhupada says the enlightened transcendentalist is not captivated by such illusory things. Therefore, he is always absorbed in the transcendental thought of the Supreme in different stages of realization, namely Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. In the previous verse, it is suggested that one should think of the super soul, which is one step higher than the impersonal thought of Brahman, as it was suggested in the case of contemplating the Virat Rupa of the personality of Godhead. So we spoke, no? There was in the previous chapter, Virat Rupa was explained. Now, gradually, uh, Shukadeva Goswami is suggesting to no? Think of the Lord, meditate on the Lord who is in the heart as a super soul. Okay. So here Prabhupada is again uh, giving a warning. He says that um, those who are intelligent, they can see that the Jiva is wandering in 84 lakh species. So he says that it is said that there is an everlasting belt of water called the river Vaitarani, Vaitarani at the entrance of the plutonic planet of Yamaraja who punishes sinners in different manners. After being subjected to such sufferings, the sinner is awarded a particular species of life according to his deeds in the past. Such living entities as are punished by Yamaraja are seen in different varieties of conditional life. Conditioned life. So Prabhupada is pointing out that to say that in this material world no one is happy. They are just changing their different positions. You know, it's a prison. This material world is compared to a prison and they are just changing their rooms. That's all. And after whatever the way they have led the life in this material world, if they have messed up with the life, they are going to have suffering in the uh, hellish planets. And then again, after so many lifetimes, they will get another opportunity. So better, the, the, the jiva should be intelligent. And the Lord is not partial. He is ready to uh, give shelter to all the conditioned souls. So we should take shelter at his lotus feet. And uh, by getting the protection of the Lord, we will go back home, back to God. So that is the message Prabhupada is giving in this purport. Now, the next series of verses is going to speak about um, the description of Paramatma, uh, what is his measurement, how, um, and also uh, how to meditate also here, uh, Shukadeva Goswami is suggesting. So, text 8 to 14, measurement and description of the Paramatma and the process of meditation. Paramatma and Virat Rupa, both he is going to speak. So, text 8, I just would like to give a small summary of the verses that we will see now. The Lord displays four hands and in them holds a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell and a club. His lotus eyes are beautiful. He wears yellowish garments, jewel set ornaments and garlands of fresh flowers. His lotus feet are placed over the hearts of the mystics were fixed upon him in meditation. One 
thus should concentrate in in meditation upon him beginning from his lotus feet and progressing uh, as the intelligence becomes purified to his smiling face the purpose of meditation meditation uh, meditating upon the virat rupa as sri sukadeva goes from made clear in the previous chapter is to assist our developing a service attitude to the supreme lord so we will see this essence in this particular kechit swadehantar hrudaya avakashe प्राधेश मात्र पुषम वसत चतुर्भुजम कंजरतांगशंक गदाधर धारणया स्मरती अदर्स कंसीव द पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड एट रिजाइडिंग विद इन द बॉडी इन द रीजन ऑफ द हार्ट एंड मेशरिंग ओनली एट इंच विथ फोर हैंड्स कैरिंग अ लोटस अ वील ऑफ अ चैरियट द कॉन्शल एंड अ क्लब रेस्पेक्टिवली The measurement of the localized personality of God it is estimated to expand from the end of the ring finger. End of the ring finger. This is the ring finger. Uh, to the end of the thumb. So this is the measurement which is given. Uh, well, now let's not try to measure the Lord. <laughs> the Lord can never be measured, and He cannot. As many times we hear that you know with our teeny intelligence and our. any existence we can't put him in a box huh? as we as the so so called scientists are trying to do we want to measure everything measuring the whole idea of measuring itself refers to maya anyway but here the scriptures are giving us clear definition how the lord what how the parmatma looks like and what is his height and everything okay so that we accept and we just simply bow down to the statements of the scriptures the form of the lord described in this verse with the distribution of different symbols beginning from the lower right hand up lower right hand up and down to the lower left with lotus wheel of a chariot conchal and club respectively is called janardana or the plenary portion of the lord who controls the general mass of people now proper goes on to explain how the lord due to the the the, the conch uh, club uh, and then then what are the other two conch club lotus and conch chakra now the now there there are we know in the vaikuntha there are 24 forms of the lord and everyone has got different the, the this this four uh, uh, um, what to say the four attributes that the lord has got the position is little different with uh, everyone purushottama chuta nrsimha trivikrama so that is proper is pointing out that and proper points out that there are millions of forms of the lord's incarnations there are many millions of other forms of the lord and each and every one of them has a particular planet in the lord particular planet in the spiritual sky of which this material sky is only a fragmental offshoot the lord exists as purusha or the male enjoyer although there is no comparing him to any male form in the material world text 9 prasanna vatram nalina nalinaya tekshanam kadamba kinjal kapishanga vasasam लसन महारत्न हिरण्मया हिरण्मयांगदं स्पुरन महारत्न किरीट कुंडलम हिज माउथ एक्सप्रेसेस हिज हैप्पीनेस हिज आईज स्प्रेड लाइक द पेटल्स ऑफ अ लोटस एंड हिज गार्मेंट्स येलोइश लाइक द सैफरन ऑफ अ कदंब फ्लावर और बेडक विद वैल्युएबल ज्वेल्स हिज ऑर्नामेंट्स आर मेड ऑफ गोल्ड सेट विद ज्वेल्स एंड ही वेयर्स अ ग्लोइंग हेड ड्रेस एंड इयररिंग्स उन्निद्रत पंकज कर्णिकालये योगेशरास्तापितपादपल्लव श्रीलक्षण कौस्तुभरत्नकंधर अम्लाणलक्ष्मणमाचित हिस् लोटस फीट आर प्लेस्ड ओवर द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द लोटस लाइक हार्ट्स ऑफ ग्रेट मिस्टेक्स ऑन हिस् चेस्ट इज द कौस्तुभ ज्वेल एंग्रेव विद ब्यूटिफुल काफ एंड देर आर अदर ज्वेल्स ऑन हिस् शोल्डर्स हिस् कंप्लीट थॉट्सो इज गार्लेड विथ फ्रेश फ्लॉर्स विभूषित मे कलयांगुकैर्महाधनैर्नूपुर कंकणादिस्निग्धमलाकुंचितीलकुंतलैर्चमचमचमशल हीज वेल डेकोरेटेड विथ एन ऑर्नामेंटल रैप अबउट हिस् वेस्ट एंड रिंग स्टडेड विथ वैल्युबल ज्वेल्स ऑन हिस् फिंगर्स His leglets, his bangles, his oiled hair, 
curling with a bluish tint and his beautiful smiling face are all very pleasing. Srila Shukadeva Goswami describes every part of his transcendental beauty one after another in order to teach the impersonalist that the personality of Godhead is not an imagination by the devotee for facility of worship but is a supreme person in fact and figure. Brilliant, proper, so nicely he puts it. So it's a fact and in the personality clear descriptions are there. They are, they are Tattva Darshis. They are the, they are the seers of the truth and he is giving clear descriptions how he looks like. So it's not some, you know, we are just worshipping some imaginary form of the Lord. It's a perfect description given by the self-realized souls and if the worship is done accordingly. So we also hear one of the purports, the Dhruva Maharaj section, in the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam Prabhupada, he gives how the paintings that is done um, by the various artists, it's all not some imaginary stuff, you know. What is there? there the, the, the Acharya, he reveals the form of the Lord, he reveals the various events, the abode, the descriptions that are there in various places, uh, the characteristics, the mood, everything is revealed to the artist. The artist is keeping in mind the descriptions that is given in the scriptures and under the direction of the bona fide Acharya, he depicts those pictures. So, because of also the, the purity of the artist and, and also his meditation brings out a beautiful picture. That's why we see the pictures in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. They are sometimes called as the windows to the spiritual world. Really beautiful pictures. We can see the devotion in those pictures. Huh? We can see the devo devotion of the, uh, of the person who has painted it. Okay, further Shukadeva Goswami says, Adina Leela Hasitek Shano Lasad Brubhanga Sangso Chita Bhuryan Ugraham Ikshet Chinta Mayamena Mishwaram Yavan Mano Dharana Yavatishtate. The Lord's magnanimous pastimes and the glowing glancing of his smiling face are all indications of his extensive benedictions. One must therefore concentrate on this transcendental form of the Lord as long as the mind can be fixed on him by meditation. Now, this is a very important shloka in, in terms of the purport that Srila Prabhupada has given. You can see a long purport. Prabhupada has given a very long purport. Now, in this purport, um, the Lord's beauty is further enhanced. Huh? It, the, it speaks about the smiling face of the Lord um, and, and how merciful he is, he is in giving benedictions and also how a devotee should concentrate on this transcendental form is given here. Now, Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he very, he instead of um, further glorifying about the form of the Lord, beauty of the Lord, Prabhupada concentrates on um, something else. If you, have, if you read the purport, you could have observed it. Any one of you read, what is the main concentration, the thrust on this purport Prabhupada is focusing on? Did anybody have a look at it? Hmm? Bhakti yoga is the easiest process. Okay, Bhakti yoga is the easiest process. Well, that is there. But there is something Prabhupada is, uh, the you long purport is trusting on something very important here. Anybody had a look at this purport before? Okay. If you had not, I would explain, I will explain what is that. Srila Prabhupada speaks about how we are not able to put our mind in the, meditate on the form of the Lord. How we, our mind is disturbed. So if you can see, Prabhupada, it takes up um, the what is the problem for the conditioned souls. Sri Prabhupada points out that the lust is the greatest enemy. The lust is the greatest enemy and uh, one has to overcome that lust. So Prabhupada gives so much of his energy in trying to give solution how to overcome that. Because that is very much required. In Kali Yuga, it's very difficult for people to sit for 2-3 minutes. Hmm? So, how, what should be done? So, we will see in this, in this purport. Very extensive purport. So, we will try to... In the beginning, Uni Prabhupada speaks about the importance of worshipping the deity. How we can... Uh, Meditative devotee should try to concentrate on the described form of the Lord as long as the mind can be fixed upon Him. His smiling benedictions on the devotee are said to be extensive. And what to speak of his transcendental pastimes. To the neophytes, the great Acharyas offer the same advantage by installing deities in the temples. The neophytes can then come to the temples and directly concentrate upon the Lord by looking at his deity form, Archamurti. 
Temple worship is not idol worship as is misconceived by the less intelligent because the deity is not a product of iconography. The deity in the temple is authentic because he is installed not according to imagination but following the instructions of revealed scriptures. Therefore, the iconoclast should not try to banish temple worship and risk turning society towards atheism. So that's why, you know, see, there is a problem, you know, there is a different faith. In some of the faith, they, because their so much mind is so much into impersonalism, they can't accept the form of the Lord. Huh? If they see the form of the Lord, what they say? Who? Satan worship. Huh? Satan followers. Huh? Because they are in a very lower level. In the lower level, they are not able to appreciate the form of the Lord. Okay, But the form of the Lord, the deity is a, uh, is a the Lord is repre- the Lord is here in the deity form. The Lord is not different from the deity. Hmm? It's a, it's called archa avatar. You know, in the form of a deity, he has descended to this material world so that we could serve him and derive um, transcendental bliss by that service. Okay, Prabhupada speaks about it more. Prabhupada says in in another purport. Meditation on the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, the first processional, processional step must show its effect by Anartha Nivriti. Now, this is the point that we were saying that you see in the major portion of the Parapat Prabhupada discuss on how to overcome Anartha Nivriti because then only the mind will get fixed up. Okay, so you can see Prabhupada speaks about sex desire and its expansion. So, he is pointing out, Srila Prabhupada is pointing out that how Everything in this, this whole entire material world is surviving because of what? Attraction between a male and the female. Huh? That's the cause of this material existence. The conditioned soul is encircled, encircled by such products of sex desire and therefore Bhakti Yoga leads to gradual evaporation of sex desire which is summarized in three headings namely profit, adoration and distinction. All conditioned souls are mad after these different forms of sex desire. And one shall see for himself how much he has been freed from such material hankerings based primarily on sex desire. As a person feels his hunger satisfied after eating each morsel of foodstuff, he must similarly be able to the, see the degree to which he has, he has been freed from sex desire. So this is an interesting observation. Prabhupada also here, hints, he, here he hints how much you have made progress in spiritual life. Don't ask anyone. You, you yourself, you know how much you are hankering after opposite sex. To that degree, we are conditioned. Hmm. Sex desire in its various forms is diminished by the process of Bhakti Yoga because Bhakti Yoga automatically by the grace of the Lord effectively results in knowledge and renunciation even if the devotee is not materially well educated. This is another interesting uh, subject matter that we learn about the glories of Bhakti. One need not be well educated, one need not know the nuances of many things but if one has a sincere heart and gives oral reception to the message of the Bhagavatam and to chant the names of the Lord, then we can immediately see that all the lower tendencies are washed away. Okay? Uh, we will see about that, a little bit more in that. So this is the point, right? So we can see also, you know, very, uh, in, in all spheres of our service, we can see, you know, our absorption in study of the scriptures, our absorption in chanting the holy names, our absorption in cooking, our absorption in deeding the, in, in, in dressing the deities, our absorption in any service for that matter, our mind is weak if we are lusty. This is a very clear observation. So, uh, lust refers to the attraction between male, uh, attraction of a male to the female and a female to a male. And the mind becomes clouded because of that. And, and not only that, there are, uh, that is being the, prime, the predominant factor. Then there are several expansions of that. Expansions of that Griha Shetra, Suthapta Vritta. Huh? Now, the, also what is happening is your, your concentration is diverted into so many things. And uh, you become weak. You are not sharp enough to think about the goal of life. So that, that is very clearly discre- dis- uh, discussed in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna very clearly does an analysis of how the lust is sitting in various places and how it is um, devouring us, isn't it? So Krishna is giving a solution in the Bhagavad Gita. He is, he is clearly uh, pushing the uh, the readers of the Bhagavad Gita to understand that unless you engage, you, know, you get transcendental knowledge about the Supreme Lord and engage in His service, we will never be able to overcome this lust. So that was the that was the point. Okay. 
Prabhupada further he points out here in this purport. Shukadeva Goswami has suggested some alternatives for the bare necessities of life, namely the problem of eating, sleeping and shelter. But he has, he has not suggested any alternative for sex satisfaction. Interesting point, no? Prabhupada is making here. Did you observe that? Mm-hmm. One who has sex desire still with him should not at all try to accept the renounced order of life. For one who has not attained to this stage, there is no question of a renounced order of life. A clear instruction is given. That means what? If one is engaged in illicit relationship, forget about taking up a uh, renounced order of life. So by the gradual process of devotional service, under the guidance of a proper spiritual master and following the principles of the Bhagavatam, one must be able to control the gross sex desire before one accepts the renounced order of life factually. So this is a very important thing. Maybe, subtly, there may be some desires floating around, but one if he is very determined and if he is, uh, if he has taken a vow not to associate with women in, at any cost, and Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur also, he speaks about it, by having, getting, showing a determination like this, one will be able to overcome the agitations of the mind. So that is required, that is very important. See, that's being pointed out here by Srila Prabhupada. Purif- so what is the purificatory process? So purification means getting free gradually from sex desire and this is attained by meditation on the person of the Lord as described here in beginning from the feet. One should not try to go upwards artificially without seeing for himself how much he has been released from sex desire. The smiling face of the Lord is the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam and there are many upstarts who at once try to begin with the 10th canto and especially with the 5 chapters which delineate the Rasa Leela of the Lord. This is certainly improper. By such improper study or hearing of the Bhagavatam, the material opportunists have played havoc by indulgence in sex life in the name of the Bhagavatam. This vilification of the Bhagavatam is rendered by the acts of the so-called devotees. One should be free from all kinds of sex desire before he tries to make a show of recital of the Bhagavatam. Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Takura clearly defines the import of purification as cessation from sex indulgence. So if you are purified means that you don't have connection with the opposite sex. You don't try to indulge in illicit sex. Okay. And as one gets free from the intoxication of sex indulgence by purification of intelligence, one should step forward for the next meditation. Or in other words, the progress of meditation on the different limbs of the transcendental body of the Lord should be enhanced in proportion to the progress of purification of the heart. So to the degree the heart is purified, to that degree, you can make progress in the meditation, he says. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, don't cross the lotus feet, he's saying. Am I correct? First so, now Prabhupada, he concludes this purport with a heavy blow. <laughs> so, he says, who is eligible to read the entire Srimad Bhagavatam? The conclusion is that those who are still entrapped by sex indulgence should never progress to, uh, should never progress to meditation above the feet of the Lord. Therefore, recital of Srimad Bhagavatam by them should be restricted to the first and second cantos of the great literature. One must complete the purificatory process by assimilating the contents of the first nine cantos. Then one should be admitted into the realm of the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's very clear. So what's the point? We may have material desires, we may have attraction and all those things. But as long as we are not grossly involved, as long as we are not voluntarily pushing for that, then you can go ahead in studying Srimad Bhagavatam. By the study of the Bhagavatam, you will be purified. In fact, if you remember, when a devotee sincerely reads from the first canto of the Bhagavatam, and he goes on to the 10th canto, goes on to the Rasa Leela, what it is said? Purified. Yeah, one will, one will be purified when he hears the Rasa Leela. Right? So, he will, otherwise, he will, be, he will go mad with lust, and then he will completely misunderstand Krishna and his associates, and he will end up in grave offense. So, with the reading of the first nine cantos of the Bhagavatam, there will be sufficient purification. Okay. So, the more a devotee gets purified, okay, the more a devotee gets purified, the naturally his inclination to serve the Lord, chant the holy names, uh, getting more absorbed um, in the mission of the Lord, all those things we can see. So, we can see the more a devotee is advanced, the more a devotee is absorbed in the mission of the spiritual master. The more he is interested in chanting, the more he is very simple. The more he is interested to give this holy name to others. Hmm? Uh, once um, we could see also they could uh, experience by their chanting, they could experience the manifestation of the Lord in the holy name. Hmm? The Lord reveals through the holy name. So it is explained sometimes, you know, Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj, such an elevated personality. Sometimes he will go and then sit 
on the banks of the Ganga, feeling little morose. Why the holy name is not manifesting? You know, he will be offering prayers and he will be chanting more sincerely like that. He will sit in the, man, in the banks. They are very more advanced devotees. That they are free from all kinds of his lust, completely free. And and um, yeah, there was one you know the Bhakti His Holiness Bhakti Bringa Govind Maharaj who was uh, Ayodhya Pati Prabhu in his Brahmachari days in Vrindavan. He was the head cook there. So he 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 related an incident that. Um, you know this uh, Krishna's Babaji, Akinchan Krishna's Babaji, who was Prabhupada's god brother, Prabhupada, Srila Bhaktivedanta Sanskritaku's disciple. He was, um, you know, we all know him. He is, always used to chant Hare Krishna. He, you know, one time he was, he was sent to do puja, there he was just sitting in the altar, he was standing in the altar and then he was chanting Hare Krishna. So he was, that was, that was his service all the time, 24 hours he will be chanting Hare Krishna, so absorbed. Any question you ask also, he will just say, he will chant, he will give a reply by chanting Hare Krishna. So he was like that. So. Shri Bhaktivedanta Sahita could permitted him to chant Hare Krishna because he was in that stage, he was in that very high level. So, um, Ayodhya Pati Prabhu shares his realization, I mean his memory. He says that uh, in, in Krishna Balram Mandir, when he used to stay, Ayodhya Pati Prabhu used to stay next to, sometimes he used to come. He also used to come and then visit Prabhupada, he used to talk very freely with Prabhupada in Bengali and then uh, they used to have nice discussion. And uh, after Prabhupada's disappearance also sometimes he used to come. So, he used to come and then stay. And Ayodhya Prabhu, Prabhu says that he used to chant on his beads. He used to chant, suddenly in the middle of the night you will hear, he used to chant a little loudly. And he used to chant more, suddenly in the middle of the night you will hear more loud chanting. So then he says that actually he was in ecstasy while chanting the Hare Krishna. Because of his pure chanting, the holy name was revealed to him. That holy name is revealed to him means what? He was directly in touch with Krishna. <laughs> so with all great advanced souls, because they are, so that's what Prabhupada points out, no, you have seen this purport, he says that, uh, as, and as one gets free from the intoxication of sex indulgence by purification of intelligence, one should step forward for the next meditation, or in other words, the progress of meditation on the different limbs of the transcendental body of the Lord should be enhanced in proportion to the progress of purification of the heart. So the point that I want to say here is that, the more one is purified, the more one is advanced, the more one will be in touch with the Supreme Lord. So this is another this is an interesting point. So we can see in our spiritual life also, if we daily we, we, we uh, do our sadhana properly, we wake up early, we read Prabhupada's books, we engage in his service, we come and then offer pranam to the deities, we greet the deities, uh, we are very focused, keeping ourselves clean. Definitely, we will find ourselves ourselves more uh, enlivened. Okay, forget about you know um, other higher levels of. Uh, Consciousness, but definitely we can see our consciousness is much better. We can see sometimes devotee is very inspired, you know, because he has read Prabhupada books, he has done some good service, uh, he was very enthusiastic in Kirtan. Immediately our consciousness lifted up. Sometimes we can, I am sure every one of us, we are all Kanishtas, okay, we are all in different levels, okay. Every one of us have this experience, you know, sometimes we see our Japa is so smooth, correct? We have this experience, right? No, very smooth, the Japa goes very nice. Sometimes, very difficult. <laughs> Mind is, you know, to, to chant two Mahamantras. It becomes difficult. Hmm? So, so we have, this is called as a juicy period and dry periods. <laughs> sometimes it is very juicy, sometimes it is very dry. Well, there are dry periods. Um, well, we can probably, most of the dry periods, most of it has dry periods. Well, we should have faith that, you know, as Srila Rupa Goswami says in the nectar of instruction, Utsaha Nishtaya Dairya. We should have full faith on the holy name that, you know, however conditioned we are, however low we are, Lord is so powerful, by His mercy, He can purify even the lowest of the sinners. And we should have that faith, that's one point. Second point that, keeping that in mind, we should be very ever enthusiastic to please the Lord by following the instructions given to us by our spiritual master. We should be very patient and we should be very determined also. So these three are the sutras to uh, make progress in spiritual life. Okay, That we have already uh, given good oral reception in the study of the nectar of instruction. Well, we should never forget that, we should keep reminding ourselves and also we should think of sometimes, you know, in our, in our spiritual life, there are some amazing moments that we might have had. Uh, like some of the Prabhupada's disciples, they think of their opportunity for having served Prabhupada. And they could, uh, there was one devotee uh, who was narrating in his memories that um, he said that um, one time, uh, who was the servant at the time? I think it was uh, Bhavananda Maharaj who was doing some personal service to Prabhupada. And uh, he... Um, he had to go 
to get uh, something for Prabhupada, maybe some hot chapatis or something, I think for Prabhupada. So meanwhile, he was, this devotee was sitting outside and doing service for Prabhupada and Prabhupada, Prabhupada is calling someone inside and uh, so Prabhupada needed a help to go to the bathroom and, and use the bathroom. Uh, so this devotee was there, he touched Prabhupada, Prabhupada put his hands on him and then again Prabhupada asked him to put him back in the room and he says that and then uh, yeah he, 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 he says that this touch that I had from Prabhupada I can never forget in my life. And many times he meditates, he thinks about that. So the point that I'm trying to say here is that in our spiritual life also, whatever good moments we had, in fact, whatever the day we started to serve Krishna, come in association with devotees, it's only auspicious moment. There's nothing inauspicious in that. In that we would have had some certain moments where we would have really felt so blissful. We should, we should, whenever we are little down, we should remember all those moments and try to push ourselves and be enthusiastic to take up Krishna's service with a uh, lot of vigor. And that will keep us going. And that will, we will may be able to make nice progress in Krishna consciousness. So that's the point. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's go to the text 13. Ekai kashongani dhyanu bhavayet padadi yavad dasitam gadhabrataha jitam jitam stanam apohya darayet Parang parang shudhyati diryata yata. Okay, here it is explained. The process of meditation should begin from the lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet, then the calves, then the thighs, and in this way, higher and higher. The more the mind becomes fixed upon the different parts of the limbs, one after another, the more the intelligence becomes purified. Okay, a quick question for you, for all the Bhagavatam sincere students. Elsewhere, a meditation on the uh, Paramatma is mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Elsewhere, there is a teaching in the, in the teachings of my one uh, great uh, devotee of the Lord, or, or you could say incarnation of the Lord. He gives again the teachings of Paramatma, how you can heard meditate. Do you remember where it is? Oh, well, it, now it reminds me of two other places where how to meditate on the form of the Lord is mentioned. Do you remember? Quick question for you. Be fast. Kapilamuni, correct. Kapilamuni is explaining also how we have to uh, think of the form of the Lord. And then, who else? The Bhagavatam speaks about, who, who also engages in meditation. It's, this you cannot miss out. Very easy. He is very young. Dhruva Maharaj also, you know, Dhruva Maharaj also says, he glorifies the Lord's beautiful form. He also performs the Ashtanga Yoga, right? He also meditates on the form of the Lord. Okay. Thus, pros of meditation. Thus, one, practice meditation, meditating upon the deity, concentrating his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and gradually rising higher and higher up to his smiling face. Okay, Prabhupada says uh, that we should not jump directly to the rasa dance. He says it is better to practice concentration, concentrating our attention by offering flowers and tulasi leaves to the lotus feet of the Lord. In this way, we gradually become purified by the archana process. We dress the Lord, bathe Him, etc. And all these transcendental activities help us purify our existence. When we reach the higher standard of purification, if we see the smiling face of the Lord or hear the rasa dance, pastimes of the Lord, then we can relish his activities. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, therefore, the Rasa dance pastimes are delineated in the 10th canto. The more one concentrates on the transcendental form of the Lord, either on the lotus feet, the calves, the thighs or the chest, the more one becomes purified. In this verse, it is clearly stated, the more the intelligence becomes purified, which means the more one becomes detached from sense gratification, which means the more one becomes detached from sense gratification. Our intelligence in the present conditioned state of life is impure due to being engaged in sense gratification. The result of meditation on the transcendental form of the Lord will be manifested by one's detachment from sense gratification. So, this is the uh, proper also says, no, in the Bhagavad Gita, um, second chapter, while explaining about, uh, about Sita Pragya, 
and controlling senses. One of the purpose Prabhupada says that uh, what is the test for a devotee? So he says that he also quotes about Yamuna Acharya and then his Prashila Prabhupada points out that how much a person has developed taste for chanting and how much a person has, de- uh, has um, given up his interest in material life. This is the test. This is the acid test. No? Um, the, uh, you know, trying to satisfy the senses and trying to please the Lord. These are diametrically opposite. You know? I want to please my senses and I want to please the Lord also. Doesn't go together. We cannot please the Lord properly in that way. Hmm? Okay. So that reminds us of the famous example from the Mahabharata where the where uh, when one yeah when one person came asking for a solution uh, for a similar problem like this. You no, know, this this minister he was uh, trying to give a answer. He was saying that one fellow was what he did is he was um, trying to embrace. A huge pillar, huh? a pillar, I mean, a huge pillar, a big pillar. He was embracing the pillar and then um, he was trying to leave me, leave me, leave me, like that. He was pushing, and then everybody was laughing at him. What is this? You only embrace the pillar, and you are saying, Leave me, leave me. It doesn't make any sense. So, unless you volunteer, he voluntarily he takes his hand out of it and then he comes out of it. He cannot be free by in, in, in touching the pillar. So, this example is given. To understand that unless we voluntarily we give up this practice of sen- this sense gratification, we can't make progress in spiritual life. Srila Bhaktivedanta Saritagar also gives another nice example. He gives the example of this marriage party, right? Marriage party, whole night, uh, wanted to cross the river and go to the other side of the um, other side of the uh, village, and whole night they were rowing, rowing, they continuously rowing the boat, and then morning they saw they were in the same place, one inch also the the Boat did not move. Why? Because the anchor was not removed. Similarly, our anchor of sense gratification, if it is very strongly rooted, you will not be able to make progress. So here Prabhupada is very nicely um, elaborating how the intelligence should be purified by meditating on the beautiful form of the Lord, the meditation beginning from the from the feet and gradually extending it up to the face. So, Srila Prabhupada is speaking about eligibility for doing deity worship here and also he is talking about the um, talking about Virat Rupa. So, Prabhupada says that those who are grossly engaged in sense gratification should not be allowed to perform Archana or touch the transcendental form of the Radha Krishna. So, sometimes you can also see, we hear this, I am sure, I'm, I'm not sure whether you have heard this. Sometimes it is recommended when someone is is feeling disturbed, is agitated, uh, it is recommended that you worship the deities. So, how do we understand these two statements? Sometimes it is recommended, yo, yo, please go and worship the deities. Uh, but again, we can see very clearly Prabhupada is saying that if somebody is too much engrossed in sense gratification, should not be allowed to worship the deities. What's the, what's the factor here? How do we understand this? Okay, to make it simple, it's like this. See, if a person, someone is disturbed in the mind, you know, but he is very sincerely uh, having a great interest to serve the Lord, want to purify himself. At the same time, he is disturbed by the agitations of the mind. Such a person who is sincerely wants to purify himself, it can be allowed to worship the deities because he is consciously following regulatory principles. He is sincerely applying himself in the service of the Lord. And for such a person, the worship of the deities will by completely absorbing, following the regulations. Because deity worship means two important things. You have to be punctual, you have to be uh, super clean. So the Lord is non different from the deity. So then, what will happen to this person who is engaged in such a service? He's always, he has to, his meditation should always be, oh, now it's, it's 4 o'clock, now I have to go and then wake up the deities, now I have to uh, arrange for the fruits, now... Uh, I have to clean this mandapam, I have to uh, see that the cooking is done and I have to clean this. All the time is absorbed, so much absorption. So deity means he is everything, the, the, the pujari is the menial servant of the deity. In fact, all the devotees in the temple are menial servants of the deity. Specifically, pujari is, is having a particular role of trying to please the Lord. <laughs> so he has to be, his mind and consciousness should be completely fixed. So then what he will do? 
his is the way he treats the lord the way he decorates the lord the way he uh, worships the lord the way the way the cooking is offered to the lord the way it's been cooked for the lord everything he takes care and such an absorption when such, with such an with such an absorption intensity he serves the lord he will be he will be uh, by the mercy of the lord he will be able to speak to the lord prophet says in one of the installation ceremony in los angeles that this deity is not a stone he will remain a stone as long as you think him think himself as a stone but the lord will speak to you if you sincerely worship him so it is recommended that for even if for a person who has, who has difficulty having challenges with the with the mind but if he is sincere enough to serve the lord the lord being very merciful he will, he will be very much purified but rather if a person is very uh, very lusty not following regulatory principles if he is allowed to worship the deities then what will happen then he will not concentrate properly he will engage he will he will do aparad and also we can see the the, the the altar will not be nice the decorations will not be nice the the, the lord will also not be there you know the, the deity will not you will not see the that the, the potency there in the in the deity because you are not taking care of the deity. why the lord lord is not some you know as we discussed before he is not a machine you know like you know now deity is installed now the lord has to be here no he is bhavagrahi janardana the the to the degree you, we show our devotion to that degree the lord will reciprocate so that's the whole point so that's why otherwise then what will happen when such kind of deity worship is done then the vigraha will become galagraha isn't it it will become a big burden oh we have to do puja we have to do this we have to do that and then but otherwise a temple where the deity worship is done with great sincerity the the the, the, the cooking which is done by the devotees is a great love um, everything will be first class it will be wonderful the lord will be very pleased and the devotees will also be very will be in very jubilant mood they will, everything will be centered in, in uh, centered around trying to please the deities the book distribution will expand number of devotees will expand uh, many people will come and take up krishna consciousness everything will be wonderful so that's the whole key point okay so prabhupad here points out another subject here he says that for them for for them for whom for those who are gross materialists who are not able to follow anything properly for them it is better to meditate upon the gigantic virat rupa of the lord as recommended in the next verse the impersonalist and the void is therefore recommended to meditate upon the universal form of the lord whereas the devotees are recommended to meditate on the deity worship in the temple because the impersonalist and the void is are not sufficiently purified in their spiritual activities archana is not meant for them so now we will uh, gradually see here how advanced yogi leaves the body so those things topics will start to begin okay yavanna jayeta text 14 yavanna jayeta paravare smin visveshvare drashtari bhakti yogah tavat staviya purusha purushasya rupam kriyavasane prayatah smareta until the gross materialist develops a sense of loving service unto the supreme lord the seer of both the transcendental and the material worlds he should remember or meditate upon the universal form of the lord at the end of his prescribed duties so prabhu here is pointing out that our real abode is the spiritual abode the spiritual world is a manifestation of his internal potency and the material world is a manifestation of his external potency the living entities are his marginal potency and by their own choice they can live in either their transcendental or material worlds the lord wants all living entities who are his parts and parcels to live with him in the transcendental world in the transcendental world and for enlightening conditioned souls in the material world all the vedas and the revealed scriptures are there expressly to recall the conditioned souls back home back to god so the message is that the lord wants all of us to be back with him engage in his service by giving pleasure to him now as the as it is explained in this verse it is it is, it is we see here advice for the less intelligent beginners for the less intelligent beginners meditation on the impersonal feature the virat rupa or universal form of the lord will gradually qualify one to rise to personal contact now i have a question for you prabhupada says that virat rupa is a impersonal feature how to understand this we just now in the last chapter also we saw the, the, the worship virat rupa means there is a a form is there you imagine you imagine the form of the virat rupa you worship um and also yeah you are you worship um, what else we we saw ekatrena uh, pratakrena bahuda vishvato mukam 
you worship the rivers you worship the fig tree your big lion so many things like so why it's considered to be uh, impersonal because personally you cannot serve Personally, you cannot serve. Okay. In that sense, in that sense. Okay, that also you can say. I see the patient. There is no, yeah, okay. But there is one, we did discuss in the last class. There is one catch here, one important point here. Um, what is the problem with the, Prabhupada says impersonalists. The impersonalists also are worshippers. What, what is their understanding of this Virat? We just, many times we used to discuss this point. Why do they, first of all, see, why do they see everyone as God? Oh, God is... Uh, That's the whole point. For them, universe is broken down into so many, uh, everything, whatever that you see. So, that, so this is very impersonal, isn't it? Huh? You have just completely cut off the Lord. And you, what is your understanding? Your understanding is that everything is God. This is God, that is God, this is God, this is God. Whatever you see is God. And you are also God, I am also God. So it is impersonal. It appears like personal, but it is impersonal. Thoroughly impersonal, completely. Okay. Mm, okay, so Prabhupada points out one is advised here with to meditate upon the Virat Rupa specified in the previous chapter in order to understand how the different planets, seas, mountains, rivers, birds, bees, human beings, demigods, and all that we can conceive are but different parts and limbs of the Lord's Virat form. This sort of thinking is also a type of meditation on the absolute truth. And as soon as such meditation begins, one develops one's godly qualities. And the whole world appears to be a happy and peaceful residence for all the people of the world. So that we saw in the last class also. If we don't uh, uh, worship like that, then what happens? Then he starts to exploit the world. Then the world doesn't. The world is not any more peaceful. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, I'll stop you. Yes. Fifth verse. Fifth verse. Okay. Just a second. Yes, what's the question? Uh, the path of renunciation is recommended for acceptance by one who is fully accomplished and fully purified in his existence. The path of renunciation is recommended for acceptance by one who is fully accomplished and fully purified in his existence. Okay. Uh, how both fit? Uh, who is a, uh, a really accomplished person? What sh- he should accomplish? And uh, purified because the by path of renunciation we get purified. And uh, okay, okay, let's. It's it's a <coughs> what to say? It's uh, very straightforward. I'll just I'm going to read from little bit from behind. What is the proper explaining? According to the regulations of the Sanatana Dharma Institution. One is trained from the beginning to depend fully on the protection of the Lord in all circumstances. The path of renunciation is recommended for acceptance by one who is fully accomplished and fully purified in his existence. Now, you see, you may take up the process of spiritual life, but who can be a renunciant? A person who who can take up renunciation is the one... Renunciant here is specifically referring to sannyasi. Okay? The sannyasi is one who should have, who should develop this trait of vacho vegam, manasa krodha vegam, jigva vegam, udara upasta vegam. All these traits he should show, he should follow it himself. Then he is allowed to take up sannyas. Otherwise, his sannyas will create disaster in the society. So, uh, what else Prabhupada says here? Uh, one who is fully accomplished and fully purified. Accomplished means yes. He himself is well situated. He is in the platform of uh, purified state. That's the whole point here. Come, that's what accomplished means here. Accomplished means he has he has practiced very nicely these principles of brahmacharya. He has practiced uh, the prop the prince uh, the strict strict uh, strictures of renunciation. As a result, his senses are also purified because he has very he has with full determination. He has never deviated from to, from the path. And such a person is obviously qualified to. Uh, take up sannyas. So that is the that is the request. so. At least the so Prabhupada is giving a, a hint. He says that by that is why you see this whole process of um, if you see the process of uh, jnana marg, not everyone is eligible. You know there is a immediately there is a first requirement. What is the first requirement? Are you a, are you a renunciant? You are, you should never be in, never come in association with women. But bhakti yoga it's not like that. 
bhakti yoga irrespective of any any your situation is in whatever may be your situation you are a brahmachari you are a grahastha you are a vanaprastha you are a sanyasi anybody can take up to the process of bhakti yoga well it should not be again misunderstood oh you are a bhakti yogi you can be a, you can be a grahastha and practice bhakti yoga there also there is a regulation there is a regulation in the bhakti yoga process also as krishna is giving the guidance that uh, you can be a householder and take up to the process of bhakti but in the case of jnana mark one has to it is very clearly speaks about the thoroughly renouncing uh, everything you have to be a, you, so the whole discussion begins are you a sanyasi that's how the begin discussion begins so but even if somebody is very regulated jnana mark is not possible for him if he even if he's a family man but for, uh, for in bhakti yoga a person who is very regulated is very sincere in the service of the lord the lord accepts him there is no problem so that's why in bhakti yoga in all practical terms it's it's a easy and a very sublime process is it clear any other anything else one yeah i didn't wanted to open up the next section because it looks like it will it will you will not be able to cover it yes This is first shloka. First, first shloka, yes. Brahma Ji is uh, meditating on uh, Vilakrutu. Yes. And for the manifestation of Cosmos. Ah. So, as we, uh, as we have seen in this uh, previous chapter that this which we should meditate means all these uh, metal things are there just like mountain or whatever these clouds are the hills of Lord like that. So, means Brahma Ji, nothing was there. So, how could he meditate on Vilakrutu? Okay, the question is, uh, before the creation, Brahma Ji, Brahma, Lord Brahma was meditating on the Virat form of the Lord. Okay, so the, 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 there, was the crea- there was no creation, there was nothing he could see in the creation. But the, that's what, the, the, that he was uh, able to, that, that the, you see, that the whole universe, if you see, it has got a, the whole... Uh, Like, like we, the descriptions we read, you know, the Tala Tala, Rasa Tala, Maha Tala, all those uh, planetary systems. So, Brahma was able to, so that, that, that uh, Virat Rupa, he was able to um, think of that Virat Rupa. So, he was somehow given that, uh, what, what is it, he had the ability to think of that form. And then, by going, by meditating on that form, how that we, I, I'm, I'm sure you have seen that whole universe, the picture of the... Uh, you know it, there is something sometimes there is a picture of the kind of a vastu purusha you have seen so anyway so there is a the universal form that that picture he had in his mind and brahma was meditating on that and by the he was engaged in tapasya and the lord from within gave him guidance and gave him transcendent knowledge and he got purified and he elevated himself to the worship of that um, worship of the form he did not be so gross as we think because his intelligence is far more superior than our intelligence okay yeah that's then the whole process is there later after that to he was able to see the form of the lord then the whole process then explained the brahma samhita how he got the uh, the lord himself he got the mantras and he chanted the gayatri mantras and how he got elevated himself. but your to answer your sim- question in a simple way yeah the, the, because of the superior intelligence brahma could think of the virat form of the lord and he was able to meditate okay then uh, if there are no more questions we will stop here and we will continue on saturday thank you very much shila prabhupada ki jai shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hare krishna